Everybody, big mess. Creek talk. And today we're going to talk about the Setzer Hatchery shutdown, reconstruction, rebuild, and why you should be optimistic and why you should still come and fish to Western North Carolina. In one episode, I asked you folks to comment if you wanted more information about the Setzer Hatchery upgrade, and several of you folks did. So here today, I'm going to bring some information to you. I do want to let you know that this is sourced from North Carolina Wildlife. So if you want to go take a look yourself, feel free to do so. I will provide a link for you to go directly to the website, and there is actually a small video. I will also tell you that there's other articles that has been written about this, the Smoky Mountain News being one of them. So if you will scour a little bit, you'll be able to find some information. But if you don't have time, I hope to provide you with the information you're looking for. And that way you can make an intelligent decision on why you should still come and fish here in Western North Carolina. So first and foremost, let's talk about the background of the Setzer Hatchery, which is located in Brevard, Transylvania County, North Carolina. It was officially the Pisgah National Fish Hatchery, which was run by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services back in the 1950s. It has since been run by North Carolina Wildlife since 1983. It is our state's largest trout fish hatchery, and it produces 75% of the trout needed for our stocking programs. That's a huge amount of fish. And if you folks have ever been over there to see that in the education center, you yourself know that it's a pretty big place. So why do they need to rebuild the hatchery? Well, there are several reasons. The raceway infrastructure failures. There are issues over there right now, folks, that if you are there, you can actually visibly, vi visibly see them with your own eyes. Leaking pipes need to be redesigned and replaced. Current water use is inefficient. Hatchery building needs reconstruction. Need technology advancements and flood resiliency. Resiliency. That area is prone to flooding. A few years ago, we had some catastrophic flooding hit the area. The hatchery was hit pretty hard, if you folks remember. And that's one of the reasons why this has to be done as well. So there's several issues. So here's the timeline, the renovation timeline. So in 2019, we've known about this for a while, folks, so this is not new news. In 2019, there was an initial design and initial permitting. In 2023, $20 million from the North Carolina General Assembly was awarded for this, and a continued design were taking place. 2024, the final design, the final permitting, Trout removed from the hatchery. You folks remember in the spring, there was a lot of trout put in these delayed harvest waters as well as hatchery supported waters. Small fish, big fish, that's why. And they implement public communication plan. Let's talk about going forward past 2024 to 2026. Demolition and construction. There will be reduced stockings and we're gonna get into that in a little bit more detail. Revise the trout management uh, plan. Obviously, reduce stockings. You have to do that. And public communication. Public communication, what does that mean? Well, it tells me they're going to try to communicate with the public, probably via the website, to keep you informed of what's going on. 2027 to 2029, key. I know we're talking years down the road, but it's very important. They expect the hatchery to be complete. Our Lord, I'd hope so too. You know what I mean? 2027 to 2028, growing fish and reduced stockings. What does that mean? Well, when you get the eggs, they gotta go, they have to go through the process, just like you do in trout in the classroom. You're gonna get your eggs in your basket. They become your little fry, they go into the general population and they grow to the appropriate size to where they can be released into the waters. Well, you've got to build up all those numbers. You've got to build up that population of fish, and that's what's going to go on. 2029, production returns to normal operations. That's huge. That's down the road. All right. So renovation. The Setzer Hatcher produces the majority of the trout for agency's trout stocking program. 2024's trout stocking will not be impacted. 2024, 
October 1 delayed harvest kicks off. Here on the Tuckasegee River, which is behind me, you get two stockings in October, two stockings in November. That is still on schedule and will happen according to NC Wildlife. As well as your upper Nantahalas, the West Fork of your pigeons, all of those other places, those stockings will continue to happen as scheduled. However, reduction in trout stockings during 2025, 2026, and potentially 2027 will happen. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. It has to happen, folks. So how big of an impact is it gonna be for you, the angler? Myself, the angler, and a guide. What's it gonna do? Well, between 2025 and 2026, they're currently um, expecting a 65% reduction in number of trout available to stock. Just don't have it, folks. It is what it is. Stockings will continue during construction Coming from them, and I quote, reductions will be spread equitably to all locations. However, number of trout stock, frequency of stockings, and species ratios will be modified. I'm quoting NC Wildlife on this. Don't get mad at the messenger. When will the number of trout, trout stockings be normal? Once again, quoting NC Wildlife. It could be 2029 when hatcheries capacity is back to normal production. So that's several years out. You gotta understand, this is an old facility, folks. A very, very, very old facility. It's just like you buying an old home from the 1920s, and you know you gotta go in and do a lot of work. Basically, this is the same thing, but on a much larger scale because it has to deal with water. So what is being renovated and why? Well, the majority of the facility, including the hatchery building and raceways, will be demolished and replaced in their current footprint. So they're going to rebuild back in their current location. I had questioned and talked to folks in the shop. Above the raceways, there's a large greenway area. So why did they not go in there, potentially start a building process? I don't know. Common sense, we would say, hey, let's go do that, but maybe it doesn't fit within the flood plan, flood zone. I don't know, but there are specific reasons, but this is what they're doing. State-of-the-art design and equipment will result in more efficient use of water throughout the facility. Well, I understand that. I can see that. Additional flood resiliency will be incorporated into the facility design. Hugely important. As I mentioned, you get those high water, a cloud burst. It has flooded over there before in the past. It has negatively impacted the hatchery, which has negatively impacted all of us anglers. Raceway, this is cool. The raceways will be covered to reduce water temps for trout, which will improve water quality. Plus, they've got nets over them now. They've act, they actually had to take PVC pipe and put nets over them because the prey were getting the fish too. So. Not only do you look at the cooler water temperatures, improved water quality, but also the reduction of uh, uh, predatory uh, loss to predation. Why? Why are they doing this? Well, it's real simple. To ensure consistent trout production and stockings into the future. So, you know, Braden behind the camera there, you know, he has, grows up, he has kids. It's gonna continue long after I'm gone from this place. That's the idea to provide enhanced water conservation, improve water quality at the facility and in the local watershed. So it has to discharge out, discharges out into the Davidson folks. Um, that's why that's on there. The facility has failing infrastructure that requires replacement before a potential, potentially a major failure. And once again, if you, if you're around those folks, they talk about it, they've done presentations that try to limit it and it's, it's not in great shape. It's, it's in dire, dire need of being fixed. Where will trout stocked in 2025 and 2026 come from? Glad you asked that folks. I'm going to tell you why. Armstrong Hatcher will provide most of the trout that is in North Carolina. Marion and Table Rock hatcheries will also support trout production efforts during construction. They're working to produce, uh, purchase trout from private facilities, but understand it is an open market. Those other facilities are in, are in business to make money. There might be more fish available one year and, and maybe not as much the next. So that is uh, happening, but it's, it's going to change from day to day, month to month, year to year when it comes to that. So what's the cost of the project? It ain't cheap, I tell you that much. Man, the bugs are eating me up out here for sure. So anyway, 
The North Carolina General Assembly has authorized North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission to spend $39.7 million on this major renovation of the hatchery. $39.7 million. It's a lot of money, folks. $19.7 million is funded through the North Carolina Wildlife Endowment Fund, while the remaining $20 million will be funded by appropriations approved by the General Assembly during the 2023 session. It's a lot of money. And as each day goes by, it ain't getting cheaper, it's getting more costly. So the sooner this project starts, the sooner it gets done, the less money it's gonna cost the taxpayers of North Carolina. So I do want to say once again, this information is available at NC Wildlife and I will put a link to this page for you folks there. I'm gonna give you my opinion going forward. What does this mean? Well, I still think it means that you should come and fish, and I'm going to tell you why. When we talk about hatchery-supported streams and delayed harvest streams, that is not all the streams that we have here in western North Carolina. We have tons of wild water in the state of North Carolina. You also have the Koala Boundary over in Cherokee who has their own stocking program. They also have a trophy section over there. My opinion on Cherokee and my background as I'm born and raised in Waynesville and I've, I've fished a lot of those waters is, it's a pretty good fishery. During the summer months, you have to deal with a lot of folks, the campers and things like that. And it's perfectly fine. Everybody has a uh, right to use the water. But at the same time, when we get into October through early spring, there's not many people over there. There's some really good fish in those waters if you get out and you go fish them. It will cost you a daily permit though. It's $10 a day. Um, if you want to do the trophy water, it is, there's more money. And honestly, those times of the year, that's the time to fish the trophy water in Cherokee. And the reason for that is, is that there's no inner tubers going through the water. And there's no people playing in the water. So there's going to be those opportunities. Great Smoky Mountain National Park. It's wild fish, folks. I know it's tough, but it makes you a better angler. Those opportunities are going to be going on just the way they are, folks. Those are wild, wild fisheries. I think expectations have to be realistic as well. If you're playing a numbers game, could you get on them? Potentially, it's going to improve your skill sets. The less fish you have to catch, it's going to make you more in tune with how to read the water, fly presentation, how to sneak up onto the fish, hook sets, and all those things. So in the end of the day, it should make you a better angler, honestly. That's just my two cents for what it's worth. Put in the comments what you think will happen and how you think this impact will affect all of us here. Not only you, the angler, but everything else around. If you made it this far, we appreciate it. If you got something out of this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I will provide updates as they become available. If there's anything else you want us to cover here on Creek Talk, let me know. Thanks for making it this far. And we'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.